this is an iPod, and we're gonna do a little bit of a review on it and go over everything. So, without any further ado, here's what's in the box. This is the box itself. Uh, we get a CD with the software that lets us actually use the thing. We get some directions over here. We get uh, some headphones. They're actually decent quality. We get a little carrying pouch for it, a little protective pouch. We get a this is a dock connector. Don't even worry about it. I Maybe mean, we'll talk talk about it later, but not all that important. Um, this over here is a uh, USB to dock connector that lets me plug it into my computer and uh, other things as well. And by dock, I mean this connection on the bottom of the iPod. Apple calls it a dock. So, just so we understand the terminology. Uh, this is an iPod. I had this one since uh, December 05. This is a 30 gigabyte model. It's got a 30 gigabyte hard drive in it. It does uh, video and photos as well. So, this one uh, recently, if you were to go in and buy it uh, directly from Apple, they lowered the price. So, it's about 250 bucks now. So, you can get them a little bit cheaper online some places, but I figure $250 for this 30 gig video. Let me, uh, let me show you something. Remember these? This is a cassette. Now, I'm not that old. I'm 29. And, um, you know, when I was like 17 or 18, I got my first car. It was an 87 Toyota Celica. And I'm pretty into music. I used to listen to these. And I carry them around. I'd have like 10 or 20 of them sitting in my glove box at any given point in time. You know, sooner or later, got another car, and moved on to CDs. I mean, this was state of the art at the time. And you could maybe fit about maybe 10 or 15 of these in a you know, in a CD thing and a in your visor and drive around with them. Didn't have to carry on these bulky cassettes and so that was pretty neat. This holds 7,500 songs. On average, it will hold 750 full-length CDs. 750 of them. So this over here, these top two shelves are all CDs. There's books on the bottom ones, but that's 150 CDs right there. 150 of them. Okay. Um, not a lot. I mean, but when you look at it, to carry all these around, like in my car or if I was going on a trip or something, that's a lot. That's 150. The iPod holds 750. Just to put things in perspective. So it holds a bunch of music. Big deal. What, what can we actually do with that once we have music on here? Alright. The way that we work with this is uh, it's got a little, they call it a scroll wheel interface. And you can see this menu over here. I just kind of drag my thumb around here, and it brings me through the menus. I've got a button in the middle that I press to go forward, and this button over here, this is menu I use to go backwards. Okay? And I got other stuff, fast forward, play, you know, that's controls from when I'm actually listening to music. Okay? So, here's all the stuff that I have on it. Alright? There's all the bands. I go in, say I want to listen to a record. I uh, press the button. Go in on, maybe I want to see this one. And there's the songs, and we're on our way. That's it. Okay. How do I actually listen to this, though? Well, we got this uh, these connections on the top. This over here is just a regular headphone jack. Plug the headphones into it that, that came with the iPod. This, by the way, um, this is the hold button. What this does is, uh, if I slide it over in this direction, it makes this scroll wheel, it makes everything inactive. So, you know, if I'm jogging with it or something, I don't have to worry about the volume going up and down because it's jumping around in my hand or in my pocket. I don't have to worry about skipping in the next song by accident. The hold button. Um, at any rate, so remember these set adapters? This I probably bought, I don't know, five or six years ago. It's still working fine. This plugs right into the top, and I plug it in the tape deck in my car. So that's how I listen to music when I'm in the car. Um, in addition, you can buy other stuff. Uh, this over here is an eye trip plugs right into the dock connector in the bottom. And um, what happens is, probably see, that says 107.2. What this is doing now is anything that's playing on the iPod, this is transmitting it in radio waves. I can now pick up these radio waves with uh, the stereo in my car, or my alarm clock, or any kind of radio that has a radio that picks up radio waves. It's got a little, uh, little button here on the side. I set this to whatever frequency I want to transmit in. Say I don't get, you know, 88.2. There's no 88.2 radio station where I live. Probably be a good uh, good thing to set it to. I set it down to 88.2. I could just... It's 
probably kind of bright for you to see, but you know, set it to whatever it is I want to set it to. So FN transmitter. These, um, in all honesty, sound quality is not the best on them. It's always going to sound better to actually hardwire the thing in whatever you're listening to it through. Um, I think this one was like 25 bucks or something from Apple. I, I honestly don't even remember. I bought it so long ago. But you can buy those. Uh, another option. A lot of cars, a lot of car stereos have uh, aftermarket stuff, or even maybe even from the dealer you can get it. Uh, this dock connector over here, it'll come with a cable similar to to this that plugs into the bottom of the iPod, and it'll plug right into your car stereo. So that's model specific. I can't really tell you whether or not that's going to work with your car or what you can buy that's out there for it, but just know that you know there's different ways that you can listen to this other than you know plugging into the headphones. So another thing, because we had mentioned before. This does uh, video and photos. It's got a pretty small screen. Um, who the heck would want to sit there and watch a movie on this? You know, unless you're, I don't know, taking the train or you're on a plane for a couple hours or whatever, and you know you're on the go. Um, they sell cables, and mine's hooked up to the stereo in the living room, and I'm not about to rip it out. But uh, they plug into the dock connector in the bottom over here, and they have a component video out or S video or you know, depending upon how technologically uh, proficient you are, you can get all sorts of connectors that will plug this into your television, your DVD player, your TV. This I can plug right into my TV and whatever video or photos or music or whatever I have on here plugs goes right through the TV. I can watch video on here. This will hold a couple full-length movies. Again, it's a 30 gig, uh, 30 gig butt model. How, ma how much movies can I fit on here with the actual music? I don't know. I mean, it depends. You got to make a make a decision as to how much movies you want to have on here, and you know how much music you actually want to fit on there. I pretty much don't keep any video on it, just music. But it'll fit maybe a full-length movie, and then like I don't know, 400 CDs or something like that. So I don't know. That's that. A couple things to note about this. Some bad points. Number one, this thing scratches way too easy, very easily. Um, the only reason why I have it out of the case is because I want to actually show you what it looked like. You need to get a case for it. If you care at all what the thing looks like and you care at all what the screen is going to look like and you don't want it to be scratched up, get a case. Enough said. Um, battery life. It does pretty well. Um, I say I usually, on average, maybe get about 10 hours of straight playback from, you know, just going through and listening to music. There are things you can do to conserve the battery life. You know, I'm not really going to go into it here. Turn the screen brightness down. Don't, um, don't charge the thing constantly. Normal battery things. Um, another thing. The reason why I think people complain about these things breaking and, oh, my iPod doesn't work, oh, the battery life sucks, understand a little bit about what this thing is. This is a working hard drive with moving parts in it, okay? Um, every time you press this button to load records up, the hard drive in here starts spinning and the arm moves around and it loads up, loads up the data and then, you know, gets it to where you can actually listen to it. What would be the worst thing that you could possibly do? It's probably press this button, you know that the hard drive is working, there's moving parts moving around in there, retrieving data off of a disk, and then we take the thing and throw it down on the car seat, and we drop it down on the desk over here. You know, this is why people have problems with this. You just need to understand that what it actually is is a little hard drive with a battery and a screen and a little user interface for us to actually get to everything that's in here. That's all the thing is. Nothing all that complicated, but you know, implementing all that stuff together and making it the size of a cassette tape and it holds 750 of my CDs, which is all of them, um, that's the neat part about it. So, you know, it is a little delicate based on what it is. You're not going to want to drop it around all the time or sooner or later you're probably going to have problems with it, but, you know, I've had mine for over a year now, since December 05, and it hasn't skipped a beat. I've never had an issue with it, ever. So it's been pretty good, and the battery life is still good. And you know, I don't, I don't baby the thing by any means, but just know what it is and understand how it works a little bit, so you don't, you know, damage it inadvertently like a lot of people do, and then complain about the thing being too delicate or whatever. So it is what it is, and uh, that's the deal. So I think what we're going to do now is probably plug it into the computer and show you actually, you know, how the heck you uh, work the thing. So without any further ado.